Today I'm going to show you how to fix the common problems with the um, Ultrafire 501B torch. As you can see I've got a variety of torches here. Um, I've got some uh, older XRE based chips. You can see it's an XRE if I hold it up to the camera. It's got a, a small square emitter in there. Um, I've also got some multi-core emitter Cree chips which are slightly brighter. These are supposedly rated at 800 lumen but they're probably only going to run at about 400 maximum. And I've also got some um, modified XPG chips. Um, these are modified in the sense that I've modified the reflector to increase the amount of light that can come out of the chip. Um, the reflector I've got in here is actually out of an XRE chip. The original reflector um, looks like that's got a much smaller hole and given the fact that these are very cheap torches they're often not manufactured particularly well uh, and not all of the light necessarily gets out through the emitter so I, I prefer to run mine with larger reflectors. It makes the spot a little bit more floody, but for night mountain biking, which is what I use them for, it still makes no difference. One of the problems that you have when you use these torches for mountain biking is the um, connections inside. And often people complain that their torches are faulty when actually there's a very simple remedy. As you can see, I'm using recycled laptop batteries of a variety of different batteries here. Um, I find these to be pretty good, often a lot better in terms of output than the ones that you can import from China. Um, although the claimed ampage of these is a lot lower than, than those that are available um, over the internet, these are probably more likely to be genuine 2.4 amp batteries rather than the um, mythical 3 amp lithium ion cells that you can supposedly buy. Big problem you get with the 501 is the, the cell inside can often shake um, under vibration when you're mountain bike, biking and cause a break in the contact which will make a five mode like this one um, cycle its mode quite easily. It can be a number of problems for, which cause that and I'm going to show you how to do some basic diagnosis of what might be the problem. Not all 501s are exactly the same, they all seem to have different uh, tail caps in there but what you can see in the tail cap, the first thing to check um, is that the tail cap, if you have got a, a, an electrical fault, the tail cap is actually secure. Inside the tail cap you can see that there are two uh, tiny little um, um, holes. And these are, if I hold it right up to the camera, these are um, adjustment holes that tighten up the reel. The first thing to check to make sure is that these are actually tight. And I'm just using a screw, you can use a screwdriver or a nail or anything like that. And just put, push them con uh, clockwise just to make sure that the contacts are absolutely tight within the inside of the seal. That will make sure that the tail cap switch is working properly. The next thing you can do um, is make sure that it's not the actual battery it's inside that's shaking around. The later 501s, if I just take this one apart, don't seem to have uh, any separation between the, um, between the tube and the, bat the battery and the internal um, uh, switch. The earlier ones had, if I can show you this older XRE, had a little had a little separator uh, between the cell and the actual head and that actually made them quite good for resisting um, uh, shaking but uh, it's not a big deal to fix. If you do find that your, um, your torch, um, particularly if you're using a recycled battery, it, the cell is actually shaking around a lot inside, there's a very simple fix and that's just basically taking a piece of insulation tape and wrapping it around the cell uh, just to fatten it up a little bit um, and that you will find makes it a much snugger fit. I'm just putting two, two layers on this. If I just screw this torch back together, you can see that it's going to be a lot snugger now when I, when I put this back in. Um, that's now actually a pretty tight fit. So in fact, it might even have too much on there. But if I just push that in, you can see that that's really tight. Don't worry about not being able to get it out. You can just take it out from here and, and push it through with your fingers. Again, now that's that's a pretty tight fit inside. And then I've got a good, good torch and it won't shake and change modes because of that, those minor adjustments. If you do find that you have got um, a fault uh, that's, that's causing problems, nine times out of 10, it won't be the, the chip has failed or the driver has failed. There's a lot of things in here. In fact, you can see this one's quite loose um, that need to be often tightened up. The actual reflector unscrews and removes like that. And inside there, you can actually see the, the chip um, inside this one. It's a multi-core emitter Cree. Um, behind there is the driver for the chip, and that's the LED on the top. 
again each one is ever so slightly different this one has quite a wide reflector on it and these just screw on and it's always useful to make sure that these are tight and then they just fit in like that and this is the original torch that it goes in If you do find you've gone through those basic tests and you can't get um, um, you can't get your torch working, if you've got a, particularly if you've got one of the older ones, one little te technique that I find quite useful is inside there. If you don't get a good contact, is just to insert a piece of wire. And I've got an example of that on one of my XPG lights here. unscrew that there. Something that I do is just insert just a folded over piece of wire inside that little that little um, spacer there and it just improves the contact between the spring and the battery cell inside. Just to be careful when you tighten it up. Pretty bright. <laughs> Lastly, if all else fails and you're pretty convinced that it's your drop-in, this is the drop-in here, this is the um, P60 size drop-in, this is an old uh, XRE chip. Um, if you're pretty convinced it's your LED or your driver's failed, then I find a simple test is just basically to take your, your 18650 cell, um, get a piece of wire, if you haven't got a voltmeter or anything like that and you can't check it, uh, get a piece of wire, just fold a loop on the end and then just push that into there to make a contact which I've done like that you can make the world's simplest torch push the battery up to the tail spring just push it over the top and then you can just test the light there and see whether that's bright enough and it's working and that's a good way of testing it if you do find that you've got um, intermittent faults but when you hold it like that it works fine then you pretty much can be certain that the fault lies with a loose connection or a connection a loose problem with the switch if you find that it doesn't work properly when you're doing this, um, then it can be a number of things. Um, if you're using a protected cell, sometimes with the higher power chips, the protection in the cell can kick in. A simple way to do that is to do a volt test on the cell, um, and it will it will show no volts or low volts if it's if the protection's kicked in. I'm not using protected cells, so I don't have that problem. Um, but ultimately, if you connect it up like that and it doesn't work, then you can be certain that it's the driver or the chip that's at fault. Thank you for watching.